Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny Hall and I'd like to share with you a look at my display boards for On Stage 2017 in Salt Lake City. This was a special honor that I received from Stampin' Up! to be given some advanced products and create samples to be placed on the display board. So here are the things that I created and I'll also show you the stamp set. I've zoomed out my camera so that you can see a full scrapbook page that's created with a new stamp that is called Sweet Little Something. And this is a three-step stamp. You would do it in whichever order works comfortable for you. I do have a video coming for some projects that are created with this stamp. So stay tuned to my channel to get some nice inspiration for this brand new product that will be released in the 2018 Occasions Catalog in January. So this is a really cute scrapbook page that was fun to create. I used a couple of different things for the stamp set. I used regular ink and then I ended up with some embossing clear embossing over the top which worked out to give me a little texture and a little bit of a different look. This is also from the stamp set and I brought in something from number of years and this sentiment sweet little somebody fit perfectly into this framelit and stamp that was from number of years. And of course it wouldn't be a scrapbook page of mine without my two little precious on there. So this was something fun to create. I used a circular design and it might be something that you can get some inspiration from. I will feature this in a video coming up soon and you'll be able to get a closer look at this project. Moving on, I want to give you a close look at the stamp set. It's called Sweet Little Something. Zoom in here. So the stamp set is wildly popular and I believe there will be a run on this one. This was a little bit challenging for me to use because this is not really something that I typically create with. But part of the challenge, which is nice, is to be able to push yourself and use something in a little bit of a different way. Sorry, making a few adjustments there. So let's have a look at the stamps really quickly. So you can see, just as it does on the front, this is the size, and this will help to create a project in a fast amount of time if you just want to feature one of the elements. The, the front is pretty true to size, so that will help you to gauge what you like. If you liked the baby bear stamp, this is going to be something that you will like as well. I wanted to also feature how you could use this stamp set without using the image of the rabbit. So here is the first card and this is made with a piece of glossy white paper and the Stampin' Blends markers. They're alcohol and so they react with the glossy white paper and I gold embossed the little the little flowers and put them in different areas and as you can see there is no rabbit on this card at all but it does have the happy Easter sentiment that I was able to feature so this will be a stamp set that will it'll get you a little further it's very nice here is a card that I created that actually does have the bunny on it and I've stamped it in pink and I believe it was powder pink that I used and another new product here is the glimmer paper it looks like it is lemon lime twist I'm not exactly sure hi Sarisa thanks for joining me Hi Kathy, I'm glad you're here. If you guys have any comments or questions about the new products that I'm showing, then just pop a comment in here and I'll explain as much as I can. I think I need to zoom a little closer in.
There we go. I'm trying to get the camera as close as I can so you can see as much detail on this new, uh, new goodies that are coming out. So I stamped the bunny and then I fussy cut it and I raised it on a double layer of dimensional so that it would be the same height as this. And this is one way that you can use the bunny. The, the Stampin' Up! shared with us at OnStage that Baby Bear is number 10, top 10 selling stamp set. And so this little rabbit is something that's going to be very appealing to people. Here's another color that I used for the rabbit. And this one, as you can see, the pink versus the browns, you can go lots of different directions with this same stamp set. So this, when you use a darker color, it gives you a more realistic look. Some of these cards are a little bit, like where I use dimensionals, they kind of got pushed in because I tra they traveled in my suitcase, which was completely stuffed. <laughs> so uh, there's, there's a little bit of, of um, you know, you can see a little bowing on some of these that I use dimensionals. I stamped this onto a piece of paper and then I used a stitched die to cut out just a portion of it and give it a more polished look. And then I used the little, um, the little flower which and soft suede that matched the ribbon here. Yes, Teresa, it does. It, it, it's amazing how it does look really like lifelike but I will give one bit of warning about this stamp set just like with baby bear if you don't line it up right then it gives a little bit of a distorted look so it, this is one you want to take a little extra time and the stamparatus is going to work perfectly for this the stamping position oh I'm so glad this is the first one for you Kathy this is fun it's like a Facebook Live, and um, so if you have never participated in a YouTube Live, it, it is pretty much the same, and I can answer questions for you right on the spot, which it helps me to be able to interact with you guys, and that's the fun part for me, too. Here is another rabbit card, and this one I tried to make it look like it was a little girl's nursery, so I chose this paper in the background, and I have stamped in Sahara sand um, stamping and, and there is a full video tutorial that's going to be coming out for this card I did I wasn't able to do full video tutorials on all of the projects that I created because I had to do some of them at different times but um, this one this one I will so I believe it's uh, Sarah Sahara sand that I used to stamp this and it uses multiple generations is, is what I have found works the very best. There's a layer here of vellum that's got the ruffles. Hi Tanya, thanks for joining me from New Zealand. I'm so happy that you're here. So there will be a video tutorial coming out in the next few weeks um, for this. Here is a pizza box with the bunny and we're almost done with bunnies <laughs> and we'll move on to another stamp set. But what I did for this project is that I, Im I used the, the quilt top embossing folder and I cut it in strips and glued it down to the pizza box. And then I used, um, I believe it was Swirly Snowflakes to do the little tag because we have some really great Christmas sets right now that we can use all throughout the year for things like a little tag. I stamped the bunny and I'm sure this one is in Sahara sand and doesn't it look so real I mean it, it just looks like it should have fur it's incredible hi Karen I'm so glad you could join there's some gold thread here and some scattered gold sequins and then I cut a little slit on each side under the arm so that I could bring up the ribbon from the back and make it look as if the ribbon was tied around the belly of the rabbit. This was, a, it was a fun stamp set to use the more that I used it. And because this is large pieces of photopolymer, then I would suggest that you do a lot of stamping with it first before you really commit it to a project because that's going to season your stamp and you'll get a better image. 
with these actual stamps. So seasoning your photopolymer to me reminds me of like if you were to go and buy a cast iron skillet, you're not going to expect it to work the way that a seasoned cast iron skillet, skillet works. It just isn't really possible. So until you get that build up on it and get it used, then it doesn't act the way that we expect it to act. And your photopolymer will do the same. So the last project from this particular stamp set is another way to use the Happy Easter greeting with your products that you may have in your stash. As you guys know, if you follow my channel, then you know that um, I like to use and promote things that you may already have in your craft supply with something new to be able to get the most mileage. Teresa is asking, do I have to fussy cut it? Yes, the rabbit must be fussy cut because there's no dies, it's, it's only a stamp set. So if you see the sparkle underneath this butterfly, this is some new glimmer paper that is going to be released and I think it's Lemon Lime Twist. There was not a label on the package that I received, it was just a package of 6x6 six six glimmer paper in three different colors. So I chose to show how you can use something that is probably already in your craft stash, such as this butterfly, and use some of the new glimmer paper underneath it with some sequins from the annual catalog. And then this is the, the rabbit stamp set called Sweet Little Somebody. And, or no, I'm sorry, it's called Sweet Little Something. And I used the Happy Easter and the little, um, the little flowers. So yes, there will be fussy cutting with that stamp set. And the other displays that I saw also, they had fussy cut theirs as well. So in the same vein of this uh, glimmer paper, I have another project that is used with something that is an existing product from the annual catalog. And so you'll recognize that this is the um, oh so eclectic stamp set and the naturally eclectic dies i think they're called i'd have to go back and look but it's the die set that matches oh so eclectic and it's look how gorgeous this glitter paper can be as it comes up out from behind the die cuts i think it's just stunning now i've also used a piece of the glimmer glimmer paper over here if you can see, I can raise it up in an angle so that you can see that it is glimmer paper. And these are on six by six sheets. It's not those big 12 by 12. And it's gonna be easy to get them to go through big, the big shot. And this is lemon lime twist, I'm pretty sure. So this is made with regular products. The only thing new is the glimmer paper. So I, I made a couple of those samples because I received the glimmer paper to be used on my displays, I wanted to make sure that in my style of using things that are already in your supply to get the most mileage out of your craft supplies, then the, if you add that glimmer paper to your supplies, you can give your existing stamps and dies a brand new look, which we all like. That always works out very well for us, doesn't it? So if you're just joining us, please pop in a hello and where you're from. I'd love to hear from you. So moving on to the second stamp set that I received. It's called Bird Banter. And this was my favorite out of the three stamp sets that I received. And when you're a display stamper, there's, there's different products that they send you that are random. And I'm so thankful to have received this one because I love to color and these birds are set up perfectly to color. I'll scooch it down a little bit so you can see that it's called Bird Banter and there are 19 stamps in this set. There's lots and lots of goodness here. So the first project that I created with Bird Banter was to make a name plaque for my display and I used lots of labels, thinlet dies, and I used three of those. I used the new glimmer paper as one of the layers, and then the top 
here is watercolor paper and I have used the ombre lemon lime twist ribbon to do kind of you know have it hang and then the flowers and leaves that I've used are from bird banter you can see there that they're really small but they're not too small to where they can't be cut yes thank you Karen Karen has gotten us the name of the oh so eclectic the rest of the bundle that goes with it it's called eclectic layers thanks Karen I use labeler alphabet to make my name embossed in white on a little circle and I did intentionally want this to look like the logo of my blog thanks Kathy I had a lot of fun making this I wanted people to be able to go to the display and see this logo and remember and think that it was my display if they weren't familiar with my work then maybe it'll give them a little tie-in to my website and the branding that I have so this was a lot of fun to create and I stamped on to watercolor paper with um, if it's colored yellow I stamped yellow and then I put clear embossing powder on top of that and so the same thing with the green and with the um, the coral a lot of fun there's a little piece of velcro on the back we have to put velcro on the back of our projects to get them to stick to the display board but this was a lot of fun so here's another bird banter I tried to divide my projects up by stamp set so I wouldn't be all over the place for you guys hi Kelly Kelly is in Ontario and you have been enjoying my videos thank you Kelly I'm so glad that you were able to stop in today so this is an and by the way a lot of these are just card fronts they're not full cards because if it were full card then it might not stick to the day that was my uh shoot it interrupted my scream oh no I hope it came back <laughs> so I hope that I've picked back up I'm sorry my phone was ringing and um hoping that it uh, didn't interrupt too bad <laughs> so this is made from bird banter and this is a toucan thanks Kathy um, thanks for giving me the head up that I'm back this is a toucan and the sentiment says just a little toucan of my appreciation and I stamped this with archival black ink on the watercolor paper and used my stamp pads and my aqua painter to color in and this is if you can see it here I'll kind of turn it at a little bit of an angle this is a new paper ribbon and it looks like it's in Bermuda Bay and it's part of a birthday suite that's in the occasions catalog you'll get to see that when the catalog goes live in January or if you're a demonstrator you can actually see it right now and you may be able to order products now so if you're interested and you do not already work with a demonstrator from Stampin Up then I'm an online demonstrator and I would love to work with you you can just pop over at JennyStampsUp.com and shoot me an email or click shop now and I'll help you with whatever you need what I've done is stamped in smoky slate in a tone on tone look and it's like this card reminds me of the birds you know the movie the birds it's so, it was so much fun but there's a lot of birds <laughs> so I chose to feature the sentiment in a little bit of a different kind of way I thought that if I turned this square on its side that it would really draw attention over here to the bird and separate it from the rest of the project so if you can see that this bird is also got some tones of green or blue green I believe I first colored it with Bermuda Bay and then I went back in with some black over that this is this is a, a really fun card I, I enjoyed making this one that that's probably why I say this is my favorite stamp set of the three that I received because I enjoyed making the projects and I'm a sucker for a bird stamp um, everybody has their what their pulls their heart and they really enjoy working with 
and mine is birds to be sure <laughs> so here is another bird and this is one of the favorite cards that I made for my display I have a fondness for watercoloring and watercolor smushing is one of my favorite techniques this is made to look like um, on the background I mean it's smushed watercolor that is a little bit of melon mambo and a little bit of daffodil delight mixed together on the piece of plastic and I started out with that bottom layer and then I added lemon lime twist once that was dry and a little bit of pear pizzazz and there might be a little bit of wild wasabi in there too could be but once that panel was created and I made sure that it was going to give me a a look of maybe the evening sky at the top and then be separated to look like a tropical area in the foreground. Thanks, Teresa. Um, and then to create the white space needed to give this design the focus that I felt that it needed, I used the layering squares and I cut one out and then I scooched it down and put it back through the big shot to get myself an opening that was going to be a rectangle. The bird is stamped in black with clear embossing powder. It was, um, this is watercolored, so I used the archival black and I used several different blue, I used blues and yellows and blended it together to make green and got some different tones happening and then I stamped and fussy cut these little branches. There are no dies for this set either, so I did cut everything out. And it may be a crazy thing. I don't mind fussy cutting at all, but um, that's some really little small leaves. <laughs> so unless you really enjoy fussy cutting, then this might be um, a little bit arduous task to, to recreate but I hope you enjoy looking at it because I really, really like it. Thanks, Kelly. I'm, I'm very fond of this card. Um, sometimes, you know, we make cards that we really like, and this is one that I really like. So another one that I'm very fond of is the little cockatoo. And this card is not watercolored. I was able to get the Stampin' Blends and once I got the stamp and blends, then I started making some samples with those markers. And this was one that was a, a, a treat to make. So this has a lot of stuff going on and I'll try to make sure that, that I get it all explained. And I will do a blog post on every single project and, and explain it in detail. I did not do a video for this one either. Um, a lot of times when I made the samples, it was really late at night and the boys were in bed, so I had to work with the time that I had. So starting from the bottom layer up, it's on a black base and the layer here is actually a piece of white cardstock. And I took three different Stampin' Blends markers and because the alcohol markers blend so beautifully, I just blended out one color into the next going all the way around the piece of white cardstock until you know just thick enough to where I knew it wouldn't show from the black being on the front so I was able to perfectly make a, a gradated background or graduated colors that would match my flowers perfectly so if you are looking for a new way to use your stamp and blends Maybe this would be something that you could use to create your own, kind of make your own DSP and your own backgrounds. So it was, it was really fun to create this. So yes, all the flowers, again, are fussy cut. The leaves are fussy cut. I actually was sitting up in bed one evening <laughs> and fussy cutting everything with my eyeglasses off because I needed to see so closely. So this oval also is colored with the stamp and blends. And what I started with was my medium tone, which was the yellow, 
and I added some of the greens in the Stampin' Blends. And then from this side, I used the color lifter and saturated the oval, and then I blended in the, the clear fluid from the color lifter into the yellows to get that blended look. This was a lot of fun to be able to create my own background pieces this in this fashion and um, it's something that I will be using again in the future but I really like this card it was a lot of fun so if you're just joining me then please feel free to say hello and um, ask any questions that you may have here is another card made with the birds I know there's no bird on this card but again, I want it to show that you can create more than one kind of a project with a stamp set instead of just featuring the birds. So there's this really cool party hat that's here on the stamp set. And the sentiment says, still suspiciously young looking, I see. So I decided to go with the party hat onto watercolor paper. I stamped it in white was a Versamark and I used white embossing powder and then I watercolored with um, I think it was Melon Mambo down in the bottom and then yellow on the top and I did the wet on wet technique to get that orange blend in the middle. Melon Mambo and uh, Daffodil Delight make a beautiful orange color um, like a coral color that when they mix together it, it blends beautifully. And the background is Pacific Point, and I tried to get it darker and more concentrated down in this area here. I have uh, Daffodil Delight that I've stamped in, and I punched out a circle and just stamped in the top part and then cut it down just to give a little bit of a different kind of an icon medallion look here. And I've used some Whisper White and the lemon lime twist ombre ribbon now the shiny stuff is just wait until everything is dry and I took my fine tip glue and I dabbed on a little bit of clear glue on the area of the ruffles and the pom-pom of the party hat and I sprinkled on some dazzling diamonds glitter and then shook it off and that's all it is this card was so much fun. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. She likes the way that I've used the neutral colors to make the focal point pop. Um, it's I like to use what I have on hand, and sometimes whenever we're stuck in some kind of a creative, uh, I don't want no one to call it a funk, but it's kind of you know if you need your mojo back then. Sometimes it's good for me to go back to things that I already have at hand and just maybe try to bring a fresh idea to it. This was a lot of fun. I think this card would be good for a guy. There's a lot of layers. It may be hard to see, but underneath this watercolor is another layer of yellow, then a layer of white, and then the base of Pacific Point. And I've got a little doily in here just to get a little breakup in the in the, um, the stylized design. So here is another set or another card that's made with the same set. This is also made with bird banter. One of the new papers that are coming out for celebration is called Bubbles and Fizz and this is that paper. It goes with the soda pop um, suite and I used it in a non soda pop card but in the bird banter there is this balloon and there is just a general happy birthday sentiment so I've used that with the um, with the dies that are from lift me up I believe they're called up and away and cut out some clouds with the new glimmer paper that's coming out this glimmer paper in my package looks a little bit different from the 12 by 12 Dazzling Diamonds. It just has a different look and it could be that it's a different batch um, or a different lot from the manufacturer, but it does not have the same kind of uh, sparkling iridescentness to it. 
but it's close enough. So I use those cloud dies uh, from the up and away to feature in and out with the balloons that are from the birds. And the balloons are colored in with the Stampin' Blends markers. So this was a really easy and quick card to create. And the balloons are, of course, fussy cut because there's no dies. Thanks, Kathy. Um, this is some, a fresh little, very simple idea. And putting everything here in the corner just kind of worked out for the design. So this was one of those, I'm not sure what else to do with a stamp set, but I know that I've got to make more cards. <laughs> we, I, had to, I had made 25 projects to display on my board and I needed to get to that 25. So I used the lines that were in the, uh, the line art of the stamps to be able to tell where the dark areas or the shadows would be. So this was fun. This would be a great idea. You could adapt to make a, a boy card, we have a little boy card. <laughs> Karen is uh, sold on bird banter. Uh, you looked at it yesterday and thought maybe. Uh, yeah, Bird Banner is a fantastic stamp set. And I'm so great. I'm just so happy that I got it. It's great. It's a great stamp set. Okay, and I have more. I think I made more samples with Bird Banter than anything else. So there's more birds to come. This is a card that went into the trash two or three times. And I know we all have those moments where we create something and then we think, no, I don't like it. And then think twice about it and say, but maybe somebody else will like it. And then bring it back out. And then, no, I don't like it enough. It goes back in the trash. This card was in the trash several times. And the reason that I created this bird is I wanted to demonstrate a different technique with the birds. I wanted to be able to show what you can do like do you what if someone doesn't watercolor what if they don't have the stamp and blends markers how are they going to feature on their their birds what are they going to do with it so i stamped the bird the toucan in silver embossing powder and then i turned it over on the back side which i've got it pretty glued down i can't turn it over for you but on the back side I used my um, stamp and write markers and I did the stained glass technique. It looks a little bit washed out because it's a bird, but I thought that it worked really well with this um, paper. Kind of gives the paper a bit more of a jungle or tropical look in, in my opinion. And I added a little bit of the doily here just to kind of give a little break up of the sign and a few glitter enamel dots. It's just a little bit something different. Um, I'm not going to throw it away, so don't worry. <laughs> I'll probably gift it, um, send it out to somebody. But there's going to be lots of people that love this technique and maybe don't have as the supplies that they would need to be able to do um, something else that they would see in one of my other display items. So this is not my favorite card, but it is what it is, and somebody's gonna like it for what it is. I feel pretty sure of that. All right, so moving on. If you guys are familiar with Andy Warhol, then you know that he has his own established form of art that people either love it or hate it. I like some of it, and I use that as inspiration for the warm birds and the cool birds. So these birds are actually fussy cut just to make sure that I didn't go outside of the lines. I colored these one night really late while um, I believe I was watching Netflix, watching Star Trek Deep Space Nine. So the, the bright and cool and warm color tones were something that I was seeing on the show <laughs> that I was watching. But back to the card. Um, what I did was stamped out in Tuxedo Black from Memento, and then I used my Stampin' Blends to just kind of make each one of these birds an individual to show that the, the colors that can work together and 
be in color families. I didn't intend first to make a warm and a cool version, but it just kind of ended up that way. So this is meant to be a note card. It is four and a quarter by four and a quarter, each one of them. So I can mount them on, um, they can go in a regular sized envelope, but I can mount them on a, um, on a just a standard piece of, of Whisper White. I don't have to do anything really special. But I tried to give a little bit of texture also to the birds. I was using this also as a practice for the stamp and blends course that I offer and this is a really good exercise to color something and get a little bit of a maybe a natural look to um, feathers or animal fur but this was a lot of fun to create each bird is colored on thick whisper white and fussy cut you could always recreate this where you just stamp and then if your coloring is to your satisfaction then use a stitched square to cut it out and then the stitched square is glued onto a panel and the panel is raised and with dimensionals that's it that's all it is to it but there's something about these little cards that is appealing to me and i really like how these birds came out and i like how these birds came out so I decided to split them into two different groups, two little cages of birds. I had more of the birds than I could use on these little cards. And I also received these mini, um, mini binder clips. And I had used one of them on a treat package, which I will show you shortly. But I, have, I felt like I needed to do more projects with binder clips. I'm not really that sure what I wanted to do with them so I took a few more of these little birds that I because I colored a lot of birds <laughs> and I coated them once dried I coated them with a fine tip glue pen so that they are really shiny and re resilient they're not going to they're not going to get damaged from um, being used so what, what did I create with this? This is actually a stitched circle and I used the planner stamp set and this stamp says do today and this one says today. So my thought process was that I can use these on my planner and have a little bookmark that sticks out and then the little, the little planner, the little binder clip, let's show you will hook on to my planner and then I'll have something that is you know a little list or will it'll stand up from my um, planner page and be kind of like a bookmark so Teresa says um, look like it is stamped into the paper yes it is fussy cut um, I took and after they were fussy cut these birds I took my black stamp and write marker that has the, the little fine tip and the longer brush tip not the alcohol markers that are stamp and blends but the dye ink ones and I went around the outside after these were cut and I um, just blacked out all of the edge so that way if I didn't get if there was any white part showing then I went around like here's my marker and I took the side part of the marker brush and just went like this and what it does is it puts that marker color on the outside the part that's cut away and that's how I can um, disguise any little oopsies because <laughs> we all have our oopsies and that that way it looks like it's a little bit more polished so that's all my little colored birds there and I have one more project which I think this one was the most popular one out of all the bird series and that's the two little parakeets I colored them to look like more of love birds and um, this is also some of the glitter paper here the new glitter paper that's come glimmer paper that's coming out this is watercolored so I created this card before the stamp and blends were released. I did um, 
you guys familiar with no line water coloring? So I've used a piece of watercolor paper here on the top and I stamped in green knowing that I was going to color a lot of the image green and I used my uh, water my broader brush or aqua painter to move that green around and add a little bit more if I needed and get that no line watercolor look. I knew I still needed to have the lines there because of the bird, the look of the bird feathers. But this was a fun card to create. This is not made with the pocket die. I have had more questions <laughs> about this card being the pocket die. It's not. Um, what I did to create this, and I think I made a video for this. I can't remember off the top of my head, but this is a piece of watercolor paper that is trimmed out this way and then I cut it on my trimmer either direction and then these little holes are created with the swirly snowflakes bar that's in the, in the die set. So there's a bar that has a line of circles or little dots and so I laid the die here and if you look closely you can see the impression that it left in the paper. So I started it here and laid it this way and ran it through the Big Shot and then I moved the die here and you can see the impressions if you look really closely. And I matched up that end dot to the end dot on the die bar and then I cut it that way. And it just gives that blue glimmer paper a chance to come up through there. This was, this was a lot of fun to create. This is a circle or a heart that's also in the die set and once it was colored in and dried I used a fine tip glue pen to make it kind of look like it was puffed up a little bit and shiny. And then the background here is just some very faint water coloring to give a, some atmosphere to the look of um, the sky but not detract away from the focal point. This was a lot of fun to make and this is also one of the popular ones that was on my display that people liked. They took so many pictures of this card and I'm so happy that people were inspired to to have interest in this stamp set based on this card. It, it's, it's very, I'm, I'm very honored and it was a lot of fun to make. I tried to make both of the birds a little different from one another too. But that's the last one with bird banter, and here's another look at the bird banter stamp set. And that's not the last. I have one more stamp set that I received. So these birds were a lot of fun, and I hope that you are inspired too, just like Karen, to maybe give these birds a try. And this is an affordable way to craft too, because it's just a standalone stamp set and it doesn't actually have any dies that go to it. So this is this is going to make some projects that you can use with the products that you already have at your disposal. So that is one way to um, to market or upsell this is because we can use some of the other items that we already have in our stash. Really great. So the next stamp set that I got is bubble over and this one also seems like it's a very popular stamp set and there are some dies that match all of these little um, components there's some really fun sentiments in this set and you can see that it's well loved <laughs> so that's the size of the pop bottles and there's going to be dies for all these things some of the things that I tried out didn't quite make it onto cards. I wanted to get the look of like a dark soda and then maybe orange crush. So I wanted to use these in a project and it just didn't work out. Maybe they'll show up in something one day when the right idea comes along. But this is what it will look like if you stamp those solid photopolymer stamps onto watercolor paper and move the color around a little bit with your uh, aqua painter then you can get a little bit of the glass look it's um it's something different so this was a lot of fun to create with 
so I'll show you some of my projects made with bubble over. Here's the first one, and this was a stamped pop bottle, and this is designer series paper as well as these little bottle caps. Just scoot it up a little bit here. And right up here at the top, there is a bubble stamp that was a lot of fun to do. So I tried to coordinate a couple of different colors. And here's that paper ribbon again here. You can see that it's it's just really a lot, it's gonna be a lot of fun to use this in a lot of projects. And I squeezed in the little lime here, right behind the bottle. It says your kindness is most refreshing, which can be a guy card or a girl card. It'll be really, really easy to make guy cards with this um, suite of products. The paper was a lot of fun too. The paper is a celebration item that you receive free when you place a $50 product purchase. And you can fussy cut or use the dies with a lot of the paper pieces. So the stamps and the dies and the paper are another suite of products that are gonna work together really well. And this was fun to create with some really refreshing colors that'll be good for spring. So here's another card that also uses a little bit of the same colors, but this is actually the designer series paper. So I didn't have the dyes with my um, products that I was gifted, and I fussy cut these little these little uh, pop bottles. And so if you are interested in getting the stamp set but without the dyes, you can be successful with your crafting. You don't have to get the die set. Whatever works out best, you know, in your in your choices. But just so that you kind of get an idea, you can use these without having the dies. And I fussy cut the sentiment that says, "May your day bubble over with happiness." And that's going to be a, an any occasion. You could do birthdays, do a hello friend card. Just about anything, a celebration card. It's a lot of fun. This is a very versatile stamp set. And I love the paper. The paper is just so pretty, so cute. And this is the Lemon Lime Twist Ombre Ribbon. So here is another one that I created that's a little bit different. This one was also a very popular card. And I've used the Wood Crate die. I stamped in um, Peekaboo Peach bottle, and I used the champagne foil to go as an underlayer from um, where I could use this label that says, your kindness is most refreshing. Now these little tiny pop bottles are designer series paper. So if I scoot this little, this little ribbon, paper ribbon back, you can see that it is actually fussy cut designer series paper. And I wanted the look of a, a large bottle paired with a crate full of pop bottles. And it, it wasn't really practical for me to create an ice chest, but that would have been something that would have been a little bit more familiar to, um, to, to me and my life and my family is that you know, you've got a, a ice chest full of sodas at any kind of a family gathering. And so I thought this would be reminiscent of family. And that's what it reminded me of was family. So I fussy cut a row of these little pop bottles and I slid them down underneath this paper ribbon. And I put the wood crate over all of that. Now on to the background. I've also had a lot of questions about the background here. My very good friend Cheryl Miller from Australia and her uh, website and blog is at Sense of Whimsy, W-H-I-M-S-Y. She shared a technique in a team that we're on of glossy white paper and stamping on it with Versa White or Versamark clear sticky ink. You allow that to dry. You don't need to heat emboss it, but once it's dry, then you can use a brayer 
and see how it resists just enough to where it absorbs a small amount of the color on the Versamark, but nothing like the white glossy paper does. It was a lot of fun to create this background and I echoed the colors from the different pop bottles and graduated the color from the bottom up to the top and it's mounted on a layer of champagne foil with some early espresso, I think it's early espresso, um, car cardstock. This was, this was so much fun to make and I'm so thankful to my friend Cheryl Miller who showed this technique and she actually has a video on her YouTube channel. So if you check out her blog at senseofwhimsy.com or do a search on Cheryl Miller's Sense of Whimsy, you can find this technique. I did not create a video for this, but um, Cheryl has a step-by-step -step video that you can follow to get this, it, this kind of a technique. It's beautiful. And it's completely flat. There's no texture to it, even though it's, it looks like it, there it is not. It's really cool. So the next card that I created with the bubble over is the bubble stamp. And I'll show it to you here. There's this image here that looks like it's maybe, you know, a, a little bit of an abstract bubble. And I used the sentiment that says, may your day bubble over with happiness. I used it a few times here, but this is um, the, little, the little look of bubble that I wanted to go with and I embossed it with silver and then I used the um, lots of labels dies with a layer of vellum and in between the vellum and the white cardstock I have silver thread that is spun around my finger to make little circles and there's many different layers of those around and then the circle design is also carried out with smaller silver mini uh, sequin trim that's removed from the spool. This was an easy card and it doesn't say anything about a pop bottle but it does say may your day bubble over with happiness which would work really good for a, a child or for a guy or for a gal card. So this was just a lot of fun to create with and I like those bubbles. You could you, you don't have to use the embossing you could use just the ink on the paper and get a really pretty look. But this bubbles reminds me that of the unicorn stamp that is going to be in another set that I did not get to work with, but there's a unicorn stamp coming out in the occasions catalog and it would work really well with these pretty bubbles. My kids love bubbles too, so any chance that they get to work with bubbles, <laughs> it makes them happy. So the last project that I have is I wanted to show and demonstrate how you could use that paper for treat packaging. So this is a gummy candy that looks like little raspberries and blackberries. And it's just a, it's from the company that makes those gummy bears. And it's just a, a generic candy that would have a big stark contrast to my colors. And these are the little velcro dots that held it to the display board but here is several different products this is the bubble and fizz paper that's the celebration paper and I love the little tiny bubbles that are the same bubbles as the stamp as in the stamp set I use the binder again this little mini binder clips which they are, are going to be really great to work for a lot of just uh, everyday uses. I'm finding that these binder clips are stuck on things all over my house. <laughs> Not necessarily on Stampin' Up! projects either. They're just handy to have around. And this is one of the designer series paper bottles that I have fussy cut and I used a, a, a sentiment from the stamp set and I paired it with some of the lemon lime twist ombre ribbon. This ribbon works so well with the pop bottle suite, with the bubble over suite. It can be it can be so flexible in projects. So this would be a wonderful add-on to your projects that if you plan to
create with this, then I might suggest that you pick up some of this Lemon Lime Twist Ombre Ribbon that is listed in the annual catalog to go along with it. Really, really nice. And that is my last project. I have some other things to share in other videos, but this is um, all of my display items. Now, one thing that was very kind with, from Stampin' Up! is that they gave on the spot a thank you card, and I'll show that to you. So this was a thank you card that was made to look like a lot of the logo things at the actual on stage presentation, um, you know, the whole experience. And it says Stampin' Up! on the back, and it has the new logo from Stampin' Up! You can see that it's just a little bit different. The words Stampin' Up! are kind of coming outside of the box that it's shown in. And so this is the new logo that we have at Stampin' Up! And inside is a, um, a pre-printed message and it's signed by Andrea Withers who is the Stampin' Up! representative that is um, she organized a lot of the display stampers. So it was very sweet that, that there was a, a, a hand note inside for all of the display stampers. So thank you for coming in, looking at all of my new little goodies. There's lots of stuff that's coming up in the occasions catalog. If you do not have a demonstrator, um, then please send me an email at jennystampsup at gmail.com and I'd love to work with you and be your online demonstrator. If you do have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, then contact your demonstrator and make sure that you reserve your occasions catalog and your celebrations catalog that are going to be released in January of 2018 to the public. It's going to be a great catalog. There's lots of fabulous stuff coming. So thanks again for joining me today and if you have any comments <laughs> oh, you're doing two birthday cards at the moment, Kathy. Well, cool. If you guys have any comments or feedbacks or questions, then just pop them into the comments here and I will be sure to get back to you. And if you are a current customer of mine, then you get lots of extra photos in our customer VIP group. So make sure to pop over to Facebook and you get to have a lot of the, the close-ups and the other information about my products so be sure to go over to the VIP group as there's lots more goodies and information there. If you're not yet a customer of mine and you'd like to be then you can order on my website at jennystampsup.com by clicking shop now. So thanks again everybody and I hope you have a fantastic day and have lots of creativity. Bye bye!